Chapter 20. Anne is a Queen's Scholar. Anne's summer flew by. There was a lot to do to get ready for Queen's school. She had to have new clothes and school supplies. She tried to spend as much time as she could with Diana, Matthew, and Marilla, so she might not miss them as terribly when she went away. The day finally came when Anne had to leave for school. She had a tearful goodbye with Diana, and a tearless one with Marilla. Marilla did all of her crying over the first three days when Anne was gone. Anne and the rest of the Queen's students from Avonlea got to town just in time to hurry off to school. The first day was filled with all kinds of excitement. Anne had chosen to take second year. This meant that she could graduate and be a teacher in one year of school instead of two. It meant she would have to work much harder. The only other Avonlea student in the second year program was Gilbert Blythe. At first, Anne felt very lonely among so many strangers. So lonely, in fact, that it was actually pleasant to look across the room and see Gilbert Blythe. She still didn't speak to him, of course, but when one is among strangers, a familiar face is a comfort, no matter whose it is. Besides, she knew that she would want to get better grades than he did, and that would make her work harder than she might have otherwise. Just look at him, she thought. All but right now he's thinking about trying to win the gold medal for best in class instead of me. I'll show him. But then, a softer thought popped into her head. Why, I never noticed what a fine chin he has. This thought made her feel strange, so she tried to concentrate on feeling lonely again. If Anne thought she was homesick that day in school, it was nothing compared with her feelings the first night at Queen's. As she sat alone in her little boarding house room, it was all she could do to keep herself from crying. I won't cry, she said to herself. It's silly and weak. I must think of something funny to cheer myself up. But nothing is funny. I might as well go ahead and be miserable. It's more fun when one is this sad. The only thing that saved Anne from crying all night was a visit from Josie Pye, who was at Queen's with her. You've been crying, teased Josie. Some people have so little self-control. I couldn't possibly be homesick. This big town is too jolly after pokey old Avonlea. Anne almost laughed. Josie had been a snooty girl at home, and being a queen had done nothing to improve her personality so far. Anne couldn't decide whether she would have rather stayed lonely and miserable all by herself. But she brightened when she heard what else Josie had to say. Did you hear? Josie said. Queen's is giving out an Avery scholarship this year. Anne's ears perked up. The Avery scholarship was awarded to the student who received the best scores in English. The prize was free tuition to Redmond College for all four years. Anne knew that she had as good a chance to win it as Gilbert Blythe or anyone else. Imagine me going to college, thought Anne. How proud Matthew and Marilla would be of me then. Suddenly, the old spark was back in Anne's eye. She sat and planned her strategy for winning the Avery Scholarship, even though she probably hadn't meant to do so. Josie Pye had cheered Anne completely.